Good evening. Welcome to Victory Update for June the 19th, 2020. I'm Greg Stevens, and this is Friday, and here we go. This is a very significant day in history. We're going to have an extended program, I'll tell you right now, at the top uh, Pastor George and Terry Pearsons will be with us. Brother Copeland has a special word for you and for the nation in just a moment. And you can watch it all right now on Facebook all the time at the Victory Channel on Facebook. And then if you're watching on Dish Network, Channel 265, welcome all of you watching Roku. However you're watching us from the top of the world to the bottom all the way around the middle, we are glad that you are with us. All right, let me tell you about what we're giving. Last day you can get this. It's a free digital download of Gloria Copeland's Living in the Blessings Now. How about that? Living in the Blessings Now. It's a mini book by Gloria Copeland. We want you to get it. It's absolutely free to you. And you get it uh, by going on the website right there, govictory.com slash victory update. Okay, a lot of things are happening before we get going too far. Uh, this morning I had the privilege of doing morning prayer with uh, Alex and she is down at the Partner Service Center with the phone center right now. Alex, how are you today? Hello, Pastor Greg. I am doing wonderful. I am here with all of these licensed prayer ministers who are waiting to stand in faith for whatever it is that you need. That number is 877-281-6297. We, we want you to call. We want to be in agreement with you so that way you can get your healing. And I just want to give you some encouragement. We have, I have two testimonies here that are pretty good. Suzanne called and said that God told her that he heard her prayer. He gave her financial breakthrough. He gave, fixed her computer. And also she was in a car accident and she was delivered from all of her pain. So that's why we want you to call us. You know, God is moving. These prayer ministers are here for you to come into agreement and get whatever you need. We have Nina who had a mass in her lungs and female organs the size of a grapefruit. And after her prayer, the doctor went back, checked and everything was documented that it was completely healed and shrunken down. So that's what's God doing. Call that number, put it in your phone. Back to you, Pastor Greg. Thank you so much. I do want to encourage you to do that as well. 877-281-6297. They will be there the entire time uh, to pray and minister to you. Okay, like I said before, this is an extended program. We have a very special word uh, from the Lord, from Brother Copeland and Pastor George and Terry. Before we do that, let's go to our Mike Garofalo with our morning or our afternoon evening news break. Here it is for today. Thanks, Greg. The mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma, has declared a civil emergency in anticipation of President Trump's campaign rally being held there Saturday night. G.T. Bynum, a Republican, says he is doing so in anticipation of the large crowds in excess of 100,000 expected at the rally. The mayor also said the police have informed him that organized protesters who have been both violent and destructive are reportedly en route to the city. In order to keep the peace, the mayor has declared the six-block area around the BOK Center, where the rally is being held, to be a federal exclusion zone. A curfew for that zone went into effect last night at 10 p.m., will remain Remain in effect until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. It goes into effect again immediately after the rally until 6 a.m. Sunday morning. An Oklahoma judge has denied an emergency attempt to keep the president's rally from happening. The lawsuit filed by two Oklahoma residents appears to be politically motivated. It seeked a temporary restraining order saying the rally poses a danger because the expected large crowd will not be required to follow social distancing guidelines. The Trump campaign says masks will be provided to all rally attendees along with temperature checks and an abundant supply of hand sanitizer. Those attending the rally have been asked to sign a waiver in the event they contract the coronavirus while there. Now, according to the Trump campaign, more than uh, 800 to a million people have registered for that rally. And the Supreme Court on Thursday rejected President Donald Trump's effort to end legal protection for 650,000 young immigrants. Those who are part of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program will retain their protection from deportation and their authorization to work in the United States. In the five to four outcome, Chief Justice John Roberts sided with the four liberal justices. The ruling said the administration did not take the proper steps to and DACA. The program covers people who have been in the United States since they were children and are in the country illegally. Investigators used social media to track down and arrest a woman for allegedly setting fire to two police vehicles in Philadelphia during the George Floyd protests. 
The FBI and police used photos and video taken at a protest on May 30th that showed people setting two police vehicles on fire. A T-shirt worn by Lore Elizabeth Blumenthal that said, keep the immigrants, deport the racists, and a tattoo on her arm also helped identify her. California's Democrat Governor Gavin Newsom is requiring county officials to mail ballots to every registered voter in the state for the upcoming November election. In the bill signed by Newsom, he cites health risks from large groups gathering at polling places. In-person voting places will still be available for those who would rather do so. Mail-in ballots and how to assure they are legitimate has become a point of contention between Republicans and Democrats. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar is taking herself out of consideration to be Joe Biden's running mate as vice president. Klobuchar instead told the presumptive Democrat nominee that he should pick a woman of color as his running mate. Senator said she made the decision after conferring with aides and her family. Biden had asked Klobuchar, along with a number of other women, to undergo a formal vetting process for that position. Wildfires continue to rage in the western part of the United States, with thousands of people being forced from their homes. From New Mexico to Alaska, more than three dozen fires are burning. In Arizona, the Bighorn Fire near Tucson has grown to more than 30,000 acres. At last report, it is 40% contained. The Bush Fire near Phoenix is more than three times that size, at at least 114,000 acres and a containment level of just 5%. Wildfires are also burning in California and Colorado. In other parts of the country, from West Texas to Oklahoma, it's not fire, but wind, rain, and possibly large hail forecast for today. The system could bring more severe weather from Texas to Illinois over the weekend. Back to you in the Victory Studio. Thank you, Mike. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, this year is a year that Brother Copeland prophesied, and he talked about manifest power, new vision, and great change. And boy, have not we seen that and witnessed that and experienced that uh, here. I want to talk to you a little bit more about that. But we have something that's coming up right here on this campus, July 1st through the 3rd, 2020. You can get more information by going to kcm.org slash revival. Here's what's happening. David Ellis, we're having a tent meeting. And why not? We're having <laughs> a tent meeting. I'm serious. If the prophet of God has said, the tent anointing is back big time. Why shouldn't you? And we are. And we are. So we want you to watch this. We'll be right back. The word of the Lord came to me and he said, the tent anointing is back big time. Get ready for a powerful tent revival like in the days of old, July 1st to the 3rd, right here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Join together, believing for signs, wonders, and miracles at the Faithful Freedom Revival. Register online at kcm.org slash revival. Amen. So you want to make sure you're part of that. If you can get here, we encourage you to get here. I found out the tent is air conditioned. So we'll, we'll see how well that works out. But you, if you can get here, get here. If you can't, uh, then watch it how you're watching us right now. Okay. I mentioned at the very beginning that today is a historic day. It is. Um, on this date, uh, some significant things happened in 1865. Most, most people see don't know that in the early, 19, early 1700s, colonies like New York and Pennsylvania attempted to abolish slavery. It was, it was vetoed by the King of England and the Crown because the economic benefit which England derived their global trade would be affected. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Guys, if you, if you watch what's happening in the spirit of faith, you'll begin to see things and hear things. Today, we have a very special message to give you an update about what this day is. Here's Pastor George and Terry to explain it to you, and then we'll be right back with Brother Copeland. This is Pastor George and Terry Pearsons, and we want to bring something very special to you today. Juneteenth is an American holiday being celebrated on June the 19th. And it's very important because it is the celebration of the announcement of the end of slavery and the announcement of the end of the Civil War. On June 19th, 1865, General Gordon Granger read federal papers in Galveston, Texas, declaring all previously enslaved people in Texas were freed. Texas was the first state to establish Juneteenth as a state holiday on January the 1st, 1986. And it's also known as Freedom Day 
or Jubilee Day. I like that one. I especially. really do too. Freedom Day. And you know, it, this, this, the end of the Civil War was the rebuilding towards us becoming one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Some people say, well, there's not liberty. There's not justice for everyone. Well, hey, you know what? <laughs> Jesus has a promise for that. That's and right. that is by That's faith, right. we call things that aren't as though they already were. So we reach by faith and we declare that the United States yes. of America is one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice, God's justice for all. That's right. And when we move into that position of faith, then we can come into a place of unity and agreement that we're not trying to just work something out on our own, but God is involved. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you on behalf of our nation. And we thank you and praise you for the great awakening that is taking place. And it's an awakening to your love, the love that we have for each other and the love that we have in the recognition of one another. And we praise you that this peace, this peace that passes all understanding has come upon our nation. And I thank you that the healing of the nation has begun. As we celebrate this holiday, Lord, we praise you and we glorify you for our nation and for a celebration of freedom for all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. Amen and amen. We agree with you, Pastor George, Pastor Terry. Here's the interesting thing about that. That Emancipation Proclamation that freed the slaves in America happened January 1st, 1863. After the war, uh, the news didn't get back here to Texas till 1865. So there are a lot of people that didn't realize they were already free. There's a lot of people that don't realize even spiritually today, you're already free. The debt has been paid. The, the God is not mad at you and, and the judgment has been made and you are free. And that's what we're about at this ministry is walking in that covenant of liberty. Brother Copeland said that there would be great change this year. And haven't we seen that? Seems like it's been one thing after another thing, after another thing, after another thing. And you've wanted to know what he was going to do. If you haven't, so many, I know many of you watch from all around the world. You've probably seen what's been happening in America. I ask you to do something, pray for us. We're working this thing out with God's help. We're standing in faith. We're agreeing with you. And I wanna pitch it to Brother Copeland right now. He has a very special word concerning the things that we have seen. Here's Brother Kenneth Copeland. Hello partners, I'm Kenneth Copeland and welcome to my study. Right on the other side of that camera is where I write my partner letter. So this is one of my most favorite rooms in the house. I wanna to talk to you today about Juneteenth. Glory to God. Being raised in Texas, Juneteenth has been a big thing I mean, ever since I can remember because it began in Galveston in 1865. And uh, the word finally got down to Galveston that the first Republican president had signed the Emancipation Proclamation and freedom started at that time. Glory to God. I prayed and asked the Lord today to impress Mr. Trump and, and uh, Mr. Biden together to make this a national holiday. It's, 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 it's long overdue. It should have been a national holiday. Now, let me give you a little bit of my own background here in these matters. Ray McCauley and I in South Africa sneaked over and preached in Soweto when it was against the law, we could have gone to jail for that. Amen. This was back during the days of apartheid. And my very, very close friend, Ray McCauley, was personal consultant to President de Klerk when he rewrote the Constitution of South Africa and freed the slaves. And I was, I was Ray McCauley's consultant 
because I had preached there with him so much. And now, glory to God, our dear, dear, close, dear friend, Christine, the director of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, South Africa. Hallelujah. And I have discussed these things with her. And she told me some of the horror stories about the way she and her family were treated. So we go a long ways back and glad to have been a serious part in all of this. I knew as just a young boy, I don't know, I just sensed it some way or another, that a great, and then the Lord confirmed that later, that a great part of my future was closely tied to the black community. And then I began to see how closely tied God is to the black community. For instance, now this is scripture that a lot of people don't like to admit. But right before we turned the camera on, I went to the Strong's Concordance app and pointed it out to all four members of our TV staff. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas. Listen, listen who the second man was, the second man, prophet, He's either a prophet or a teacher. Right behind Barnabas, Simeon. That was called Niger. He was identified, that is Greek for black. He was Simon, Simeon, but he was identified as the black prophet. And this man, This became the Apostle Paul's home church for a long time. And he was there, I understand from from, uh, Rick Renner in his studies, he was there under and being taught and trained there for something like a year. And he kept going back to Antioch, as you know. So one of his primary instructors, and, and you notice, it's, it's always very important, very important to point out, I believe in this, to point out that this man, this important man was a black man. And he's an important man and helped train the man that wrote over half of the New Testament. Oh, glory to God. If I wasn't tied to this microphone, I'd run around. <laughs> I'd run around this desk. Hallelujah. <laughs> now let's go to the 13th chapter of the book of Romans. I love this chapter. Anyway, over the years has been the the spirit of God has ministered so many, so many things to me from this 13th chapter of Romans, as most of you know. But listen to this. The seventh verse. Render, therefore, to all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Juneteenth needs to be a national holiday. Glory to God, somebody's finally waked up to what Juneteenth is. I've known it since I was 12 years old. (laughs) It's big celebration in Texas. Hallelujah. It's past time. It needs to be right there with Martin Luther King Jr. Day. 
There needs to be streets named in honor of Juneteenth. Praise God forevermore. Partners, I am here to give honor to whom honor is due. The many, many, I'm talking about many on the KCM staff. Tim, I'm thinking right now, a young guy on, on security, name's Richard Gurley. One of my flight instructors' name was Gurley. And Jim was of German descent, Jim Gurley. And so I asked Richard, I said, Richard, um, where are you from? He said, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> now this man is truly African American. His dad of German descent, that's where he got the name Gurley, which caught my attention. And his mother made sure that they went to Liberia where Richard could be born an American citizen. Now, so many of you say, what? Well, look it up for yourself. Google knows. I ain't got time to educate you over that. <laughs> but it's one of the most interesting histories in the American history books. Glory to God. And you ought to know it. You ought to know the history behind it. I'm not going to tell you, but you find it out. And the, the young men and women on our staff, young men and women, KCM staff, EMIC staff, and hey, uh, the, uh, the congregation of EMIC, uh, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, uh, we're, we're just, we're a family and we love one another and it's big time for us. And I've, oh, oh, please, Jesus, I don't hope I didn't leave anybody out. And uh, I, <laughs> I did the best I could. Big Tom Slayton, glory to God and him in California. I want to tell you something Big Tom said. Big Tom, if reading he, in any crowd, you can see Big Tom because he's head and shoulders, head, uh, head tall. And anybody in there, when I walk in, he just waves. I say, hey, there's Big Tom. I've known him for years and years and years. I love him. Part of his ministry, he's part of this ministry. And you remember they wrote Black Lives Matter all over the sidewalks and the streets there in front of the White House. Boy, I'll tell you, Big Tom texted text me in all capital letters. They ought to write Black Lives Matter in front of every Planned Parenthood clinic in the United States. And I agree. Oh my goodness. Clarence McClendon family, my kids. Creflo Dollar family, whoa. Yeah, Creflo said, he preaches like me, but he looks more like Gloria. <laughs> and they jumped him out and said, why do you call that white man your spiritual father? He said, because he gave birth to me. Oh, and I tell you, I got something from Creflo. He said, you know, I don't know why the, black, the white man claps one, two, three, four. I don't know why the black man claps one, two, three, four. But if we get together, we don't miss a beat. Isn't that good? Let me get the chill bumps run back down. <laughs> Terry Minor Jr. Oh, and his family, beautiful family. His, his dad, Terry Minor Sr., is in heaven today. 
very close man to me. Bill Winston family, Tuskegee Airmen, <laughs> Harry Bishop Harry Jackson family. Oh, you talk about a man of God, a man after my own heart. Fred Price, Fred and Betty, the whole family. Stayed in our home when we weren't there. Takes my airplane anywhere it needs to go. Now, these, these, people are, these people are family to me and have been for years and years and years and years and years. Tony Irby, oh, dear. Tony Irby, glory. Dr. Tony Irby, I thank you very much. He's the dean of Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Chaplain A.L. Downing. His family. Chaplain Downing. Tim, look over there on that desk and hand me that very fine looking headdress. Right there. And bring that to me, please. It was Chaplain, we call him Chap, Chaplain A.L. Downing. This was presented to me when I preached and taught at West Point, where Chaplain Downing was chaplain at that time. Be careful with that, please. And a young woman that was in those classes at West Point. She is today regular army colonel. And every time we have our military meeting together with, with Chaplain Downing, she is always there. And the last time we were there, she brought the West Point choir in to sing. Marvelous, wasn't it? Marvelous. Almost every person, I don't remember the, the count. Maybe you do, Tim. Almost every person in that choir, guess what? Black. I'm so excited about this. Hey, you tell me it's not time for Juneteenth to be a holiday? Big time. Clyde Oliver, oh, 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 glory to God to his family. I, I, I read some of these and I can't, I can't keep the tears back. And right here in our own congregation, John Jester. Buta, hey, this man, this man could be pastoring anywhere in the world. He's one of the most powerful men. He's a social pastor. You, you can't run him off. But I'm telling you, when he receives the offering, you, you, can't, you can't sit there. This is something about a black preacher. You, hey, white people can't do it. <laughs> I tried. I wanted to be black when I sang it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> and Jeff, I'll tell you that, I call him John Jetstar, John Jester, Jetter, Jetter, Jetter. <laughs> and uh, you remember Victory Thon? You remember the young guy that's running up and down the halls? That's, that's John Chester. Oh, Tony Brazelton. Oh, these the images of these people just coming up before me. Darrell Marshall, Dwayne, oh, Dwayne Brewington, dear, oh man. Oh, I remember when we ministered to Wayne. Well, I won't get into that. I'll break me up. Jerome Mills. Devon Alexander. <laughs> Glory to God. Sarah Utterbach. Oh, my goodness. Sweet Sarah. 
her, her, her husband, they, they went to Raymond. And they had retired from the post office. And uh, they went to Raymond after their retirement. And they started one of the most fabulous churches in Hackensack, New Jersey. And Love Christian Center. I'm, I'm going to be preaching for her and not too far away. Mark Thomas, Ray Bernard family, Stephen LaFlora. <laughs> well, who is that? Well, guess who Stephen LaFlora is? That's Candy's husband, Wayne Stevens. I can't think about Wayne Stevens without thinking about the, the fabulous meeting we had on the island of Ebi. And it had been a drought for so many years that, 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 that the, the water systems, systems, cisterns and everything had dried up. And we stood on the word of God and it started raining there and it rained night after night after day after day. And Wayne was on the keyboard and, and they had a little hut built over it. <laughs> I, was, I had a a rain slicker on and just preaching out in the rain and it's flooding and everybody's shouting. And I, I was ready to, to sing at the close of the service and I looked back in that little hut and I didn't see Wayne and I thought, where did he go? I, where did Wayne go? And I started to sing and, and I heard the, the little keyboard back there go, Oh, 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 I didn't say <laughs> he Tim, he had a hair dryer and he's down under there drying out that keyboard in time for me to see. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Keith Butler. Bishop Keith and Deborah Butler. And that whole Butler family. They're my they're my kids. Hey. We were, we were preaching in Cobo Hall in Detroit. And somebody sent me a message about Keith Butler, that he, he preaches like you, preached faith like you, went to Raymond. I said, I'm going to go by. I'm, I got to go by and hear this young man. So we just went over there and went to church. I said, Gloria, you better watch this man. <laughs> We, over the years, have become so close. We are so family. Jim Talbot. Oh, my dear friend, Jim. Usher and right-hand guy to Pastor George at EMIC. Boy, you, tell, you talk a man about a man being faithful. What a man in his, in his family. <laughs> ben Tankard. Oh, I laugh when I think about Ben and his beautiful wife. She's way too pretty for him. But anyway, this guy is huge and his wife is as tall as she is. And they're, they're beautiful people. And they always come to the minister's conference. He's another one. He's, he's like Big Tom. I mean, Ben Tankard walks in and nobody has to wonder if Ben's there. His head sticks out above everybody. Hallelujah. Great pilot had a big thing to do about believing with us for the Citation 10. Praise God. Mike Freeman. It was Mike Freeman's G4. Our airplane was not available, which was maintenance or something. And we were going to Bishop Oyedipo's in Lagos. And I called Mike. And I said, Mike, man, I, I, I need your Gulf Stream. Sure. I mean, it's like that. He said, one of the things that the Lord said to me when I asked him if I could have a Gulf Stream, he said, if you will make it available to Fred Price and Kenneth Copeland. And he, that one time, 
He made it available to glory and me. And that's when Gloria said, we're going to get a Gulf Stream. <laughs> now here we are. And we're flying a Gulf Stream that I bought from this little known uh, black man named Tyler Perry. Little known, are you kidding? One of my heroes. This man is one of the most unusual men men that I know anything about. Early 70s, full gospel businessmen, international convention, San Francisco. I was invited to speak to the youth and uh, Richard Sicarian invited me and John Osteen. And, <clears throat> and this, this, this young guy was doing the music. His name was Andre Crouch and the Disciples. And I taught on the covenants of God and the agreement covenant of God that when you enter into grief, two or three uh, gather together in my name. I said, now, now and I taught this, I, I taught this all week in teaching faith, that this is a blood covenant. So we were going on to Hawaii for the first regional convention there. So Sunday, he said, let's have breakfast together. I said, yeah, sure. So he had his, he had his legal pad and, and all that. He said, now, um, I had talked about the heavenly grant. He said, um, now, Brother Copeland, I need, I, 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 he said, first of all, he said, I want to take the group on the road full time. I said, yeah. And I need a bus. So, do you think we can do that? And I said, no, I know we can, but now you're going to have to write it down. So we sat there and built that agreement together. And <clears throat> we went on to Hawaii and had a great meeting. And it was a few weeks later. He needed $4,000 a month and he needed $50,000 for a bus. Now that can tell you it was in the 70s because that bus today would, would cost probably $200,000. But anyway, and so he went on and it was just several weeks later, he called me and hollered on the telephone. I got it, bless God. I said, what? He said, I got my bus and, I, and I got, I'm going full time. And he went full time. And then when his dad passed, I had the privilege and honor of separating him into the office of senior pastor of that church. I was down in Louisiana and I'd gone on a deer hunt. I mean, this is just, just a few years ago. I never leave my phone on when I'm out in the field like that. Never. But this time I did. And, and it was just almost sundown and I finished. Hunting. In fact, I had, I had gotten the deer that I wanted and my phone rang. And it was Billy Maxwell, Andre's drummer for years and didn't, was a drummer for me on some of my music projects. He said, Kenneth, Andre's not doing good. He said, he's, 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 they, they say he's dying. Pray, man, a lot of the anointing God came on me. And I, you know, I addressed the devil loudly enough. You could hear me all over those woods. Well, went on in just a few minutes though. Billy called back and he said, Kenneth, uh, Andre's rallied. And he said, uh, they're taking him upstairs for some more tests. He said, I've got the speaker on. Put the speaker up to his ear. 
I said, Andre, think about it, man. You step across into the other side. Your songs, the hymns of the church, that'll be the way they greet you into heaven. And then Billy said, oh, he's smiling, brother. And then he called me back in a minute. Well, he said, Kenneth, that big smile on his face, he just slipped over into glory. So I was honored and privileged by the Lord to have been there at the beginning and to have been there at the closing. And that's one of the reasons, not the only, of course, that I, I open, I open my meetings. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Rosie Greer. Some of you, a big football fan know Rosie Greer, the big monster of a man <laughs> that took up knitting to calm his nerves. Boy, if he don't think he, <laughs> but Rosie in those days was so big. Uh -uh. He just smile and say, Rosie, enjoy your knitting, sir. <laughs> So I called him. I said, Rosie, I need your help, sir. Sure. I said, you have to understand. With me, it's not prejudice, it's ignorance. Your mother raised you and taught you how the white man thinks because you had to know that. I'm sorry to say we weren't raised that way. So I need you to help me. I need to know how to say things. I need to know how to approach certain things. I, I, will you help me? Oh yeah. I said, well, pay close attention to me. Watch me on television and listen to me. And, and he would call me. He'd say, Kenneth, uh, need you, I think you need to rephrase that a little bit. I said, yes, sir. I'll never, I'll never say it that way again. Rosie Greer taught me. And then, of course, there's Sandra Crouch, I had Andre's twin sister. Joy Williams. Kenneth Dunlap family. Nick Wright family. Ah, oh, Nicholas Wright. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord, if I've, I've missed anybody. <clears throat> Bishop J.C. and Mother Hash. <laughs> when J.C. Jr., who is now senior pastor and joy went to Rama. Bishop Hash, Bishop of the oldest black denomination, oldest African American denomination. Not the largest, but the oldest. He went to Tulsa to see what his son was getting into. He said, listen, 
we've got to introduce this to this whole denomination. And to make a long story short, they invited uh, <clears throat> Bishop and Mother Hash invited me to come to Winston-Salem and preach there. And I made an announcement. <laughs> I said, now tell all your friends, all your neighbors, you want to be here now tomorrow night because I am going to tell you everything the New Testament says about racially mixed marriages. Oh, Mother Hash said she just wanted to, what are they going, the clan going to get him? And so the next night I said, I'm going to tell you just as serious as I could be. The New Testament says absolutely nothing <laughs> about racially mixed marriages. Oh, she said. So I introduced them at Southwest. And it just came on. I called them up on the platform and introduced them to that whole congregation. And I turned around. I, I said, Mother Hash, uh, can I be your white child? She said, absolutely so. Bishop went on to be with the Lord. Mother Hash outlived him several years. And she had called me and on one of her birthdays. She was wanting a new car. And, and so, and I found out about it. Don't tell anybody, but Chloe and I just bought her a new Cadillac. <laughs> Ow, she said, well, hey, that's my mother. Mother Hash. And then she would call and say, Kenneth, is Gloria there? I see her, Mama Hash, you want to talk? Yes. <laughs> and then Francine, her daughter. And I talked to JC and Joy just a few days ago and called them and, and prayed with them over all this going on. We had something called 30 Days of Glory. And one of my, I, could, I can say this, absolutely. Leroy Thompson was one of my heroes. Preached prosperity without shame. bought property, a lot of it, to build his church on, right where his grandfather was a slave in Louisiana. Leroy stepped on a lot of toes, and I just got on there and stood on them with him. And Leroy would come up here and preaching that 30 days of glory. And, and he didn't make them all, but he, I'll tell you, he, he almost made every, every 30 days. He, he had some things that he, he had to do. Leroy would say, we're going to get a gusher. And then Carolyn would say, Leroy. <laughs> and that family I pray to God that I haven't left anybody off of this list. But if I did, you email me, write me, I mean, you know, run up the flag and I'll make it right. Because I love you. In some ways, I forgot Willie. Jesus, what's his last name? I met Willie years ago, and he gave me his testimony. 
somebody had invited Willie to come do a revival meeting in their church. And it was in the, it was in the deep south. So he was excited about it, went and showed up on a Sunday night that the revival was supposed to start on Monday. He walked in and introduced himself and sat down in the, you know, in the church there someplace. And, they, and the, you know, the deacons came around and said, uh, Willie, forgive us, but uh, we love your music, but we didn't know you were a black man and it's just not going to work here. And Willie said, Kenneth, I, I know he called me Brother Copeland. He said, Brother Copeland, I, I walked out there in front of that church and I turned around and I looked at him. He said, I was weeping. And I said, Jesus, they won't let me in there. And he said, the Lord said, Willie, they won't let me in there either. He said, I started laughing. And he said, I he said, Lord, I forgive them. And just turned around and walked off. That by forgiving that group of deacons and that pastor, then the Lord was able to move in there. They contacted Willie and said, we have done you wrong. Please come back and hold this meeting for us. If I remember right, they said, stay as long as the Lord leads. And they had, up until that time, the finest, most powerful move of God they had ever had in that church in its history. Another one of my heroes. Now, I have an understanding of that. Because in many cases, particularly years ago, you can get in more churches than I can. Because I preach prosperity. And the devil sees to it that Google lies. They claim my personal net worth is more money than the ministry and all of its property and everything that it owns is worth. So if he can't put you down by making you poor, he puts that thing in there and, and just, and people just say, well, who does he think he is? He's not coming in our church. What does he do with all those hundreds of millions of dollars? Well, I don't know what there's hundreds of millions missing somewhere. And that's the reason that there are Christian people that literally hate me. But you and our family. Father, I praise you. And it's with great honor to be in a place and in a position now that I have, have gained a little recognition so that, it, so that my words mean a little something and go out in a lot of different places. And I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, I join all of my partners in agreeing that our president and Mr. Biden can come together and declare Juneteenth a national holiday. And I thank you. And together we believe it'll take place. In the name of Jesus. God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 What a powerful word from Pastor George and Terry. 
and from Brother Copeland. You ever wonder why, why, why did Brother Copeland mention all those names of all those people? Let me tell you why. It's one word and it's called covenant. He's a covenant partner with them. They're covenant partners with him. We've talked about this day, Juneteenth, and what it all means from the 1860s to now. During the 1950s and 1960s, there was a focus on expanding freedom twice. In the 1800s, there was a focus, there was a rally on expanding freedom. And that's the third time. In all of those times, guess what happened? It resulted in revival. All the what you see that's happening on the news, it's prelude, my friend, to a revival. God's doing it again. Let me give you a verse, Galatians 3, verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek. First it says this, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentile. That's how I was grafted in to the covenant. And then verse 28 says, there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, male nor female, for you're all one in Christ. Look at that, Jew or Greek, that's spiritual, bond or free in the time of Paul, that's slave and masters male or female, for you're all one in Christ. Isn't that something? That's the answer, church, and you can be the one. Before all of this broke out, you know, we were going through the COVID-19 pandemic and then the racial things here in America. And before that happened, the Lord spoke to Brother Copeland and said, you want you to have a tent meeting. And I want you to have it here coming up. And isn't it interesting, David and I were talking about this as we were listening to Brother Copeland. Isn't it interesting, the name of it, <laughs> the Lord gave him the name, Faith for Freedom. Faith for Freedom Revival. Guys, everything that you've seen on television, all this stuff, listen, well, I'm not minimizing it. It's, it's, it's horrible. But you need to know that on the other side of this, God's going to do it again. He did it in the 1860s and Juneteenth. He's done it in the 1950s and 1960s, all around these dates and this type of thing. And I'm telling you, there's a revival coming. There's an awakening coming to America and to the world. And I want you to get your faith ready for it. Faith for freedom. Come on, that's it. Faith for freedom. Do you have faith for freedom? Do you? That's what it's going to take. It's going to take an awakening in America. I agree with Brother Copeland. Make it a national holiday so that we always remember. Father, we praise you. I thank you. I pray for our partners. I thank you for all those that are watching us now and when this replays. I speak peace, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you right now. Come on, intercede with me on this revival just, just for a few seconds. This is a destined thing. Faith for freedom. Freedom. Freedom for the oppressed. Freedom and justice for all. It's happening right here at Eagle Mountain. Father, I pray right now for every speaker begin to speak to them move upon them. I pray for the singers. I pray for everything that's going to happen concerning it. I pray for everybody that's watching us right now that they are healed and whole in the name of Jesus. I command sickness to come off of you in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are afraid that you've got the, the COVID uh, things now, I curse it, command it to leave your body in Jesus' mighty name. I'm speaking to lungs right now. Be, be healed, breathe deeply in the name of Jesus. Headaches, migraines, you have to go right now. It's already starting in America. If you'll have faith for it, you can receive it right now in Jesus' name. I thank you that racial harmony is happening for for we're one in Christ Jesus. I thank you for covenant. We give you praise and we give you glory for it forever and ever and ever in the name of Jesus. What a wonderful day it's been on Victory Update. I want you to have a very blessed weekend. We'll see you next week.